Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be demoing the Visual Studio Code tool and how you can use it to browse through the main project source and act as a front end for the GDB debugger when debugging main. Just to be clear, this is not about using MAME, so if you think this will help you, I don't know, play games better or uh, hack the ROMs better, this isn't that. This is about the MAME project source itself. So it's really more geared toward MAME developers. Although, come to think of it, pretty much every seasoned MAME developer already knows how to make this work with whatever tools that they like, and this probably won't really be for them. Uh, it's kind of like for me, because I, I haven't used Visual Studio Code to browse the source. I've used it as a debugger front end, but not to browse through. And I was curious, like, how well does that work? How easy is it to set up? Uh, but come to think of it, uh, now I know. Uh, so I, why am I making a video just for me to watch? I already know. So this isn't really for me either. This. This video, I guess, kind of isn't really for anybody. So save yourself the time and just turn it off. But don't forget, on your way out, to smash that dislike button. What am I doing with my life? So to start off, here I am in Visual Studio Code, nothing is opened, but I do have an extension installed. In particular, the C, C++ extension. Uh, this is from Microsoft. I'm not gonna go over how to install this. You install this like any other extension. You just search for it and say, please. And this is what will support the C++ browsing and debugging. So to get yourself going, you need a workspace. And in VS Code, you can make a workspace out of any folder at all. My main folder is the root of the repository and also has all of the built executables and stuff. The SRC folder is where all of the C++ goodies are. So I'm gonna make a workspace out of this folder. File, open folder. And I'm right here in my main SRC folder and I'm just gonna say select folder. You'll notice that automatically a whole bunch of tabs got opened up for me and then there's some stuff over here. Although I don't yet have a workspace in this folder, I actually removed the one that I had before so I could demonstrate creating a new one for you. There are user settings that Visual Studio Code remembers in other places like under app data. So if this is truly the first time that you're opening up this folder, you're not gonna notice all this stuff opening on your behalf. So to try to keep this kind of like what your experience would be, let's just close everything. And if I go back to that folder, nothing has changed. At some point, once I start giving VS Code some information to remember about this workspace, it's gonna create a .VS Code folder, but until that's created, it has nothing to say yet. On the left, you can see a tree control representation of the source code in the folder that you're opening. I'm just gonna to go to my favorite file of all, mc6847.cpp. So we're browsing and we're browsing and we're wondering, oh, hey, I wonder where this symbol is defined. And so we hit F12 to go to the definition. And then it starts doing something. Something starts spinning around. Perhaps it's starting to generate the uh, uh, intermediate database to figure out where the definitions of everything is. And very quickly, it now found it, so it built enough to get there. In fact, if I go back and I do go to definition again, now it's instant. And it seemed to do this without me telling it anything about anything. That said, it's not a bad idea to just go through the settings to see just what the heck it thinks it's doing. So we can do Control shift p C, C++, and we're going to go to Edit Configurations. So right now we're editing, editing the Win32 configuration. And I'm going to pick the proper compiler. Interestingly, it's done a scan and it has figured out where all my compilers are. I'm gonna go for CLang over here. And this is the directory of all the build tools for when I build main. I'm also gonna go down here 
and change the IntelliSense mode, which it's already telling me, dude, this is not compatible with CLang. So we're gonna go for Windows CLang X64. Include path, where does it find all those Windows SDK headers and stuff? Well, we're just going to be doing a recursive search starting from our workspace folder, which is the main SRC folder. You can list your preprocessor defines for that configuration. I'm just gonna leave it alone. I'm just gonna leave this stuff alone. Don't even know if they're right for MAME, but whatever. And if we look here, we'll see we now do have a VS Code folder created. And it's created a couple. For the extension, the CCPP extension, you can see that all those options I went through now appear in the JSON. In particular, this is what we changed, that and that. And the settings JSON, I don't know. So let's see what other things it can find. Can it find UN16-T? Yep. Right there and stood int, which is part of my build tools. Alt left goes back. How about that MC6847 friend device? Yep. That's a device T, you know where that is? Yep. So it didn't take long to build this whole database and it seems to have done a pretty good job so far. How about going the other direction? How about finding references? What other folks are using device underscore T? Go to references. So this seems much slower. Um, seems like it did in two passes first to figure out how many files to be going through and now it's trying to go through them one by one to confirm. I might have better luck if I just do a find in files instead. I'm gonna cancel this. And we're gonna do an edit, find in files. And already it's showing us a whole bunch of hits. Okay, well that's fascinating, but can we debug? So I'm gonna set a breakpoint that gets set every time we enter the update field sync timer method. So I'm gonna go here, hit F9. And I'm just gonna say debug it as if it knows what I'm talking about. And here it's telling me, I don't know what you're talking about. So I'm gonna pick this configuration, GDB launch. So it's gonna launch the application using GDB and then attach to GDB with this as my front end. And here it's telling me, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't even know the name of your application. You've got to help me out. So I'm going to open launch.json. And again, we're going to do this for GDB. And now I can start adding the data it needs to do actual debugging. So first I, I need to add a configuration. So I'm going to pick one for GDB launch. And boom, a whole bunch of canned code. The first thing I need to adjust is, of course, program because it is not called a.exe. Today, my main executable is called Dragon D. And I'm doing this funky business because I need to go up a level. So I'm at the repo level, and then that's where the built executable lives. Next up are the command line arguments. Each argument is its own string as part of a, an array. And this is generally what I use when I'm just running it directly from the command line. For the current working directory, I want it to be the top of my main repo. That's where the executable lives. And I found that in, in some cases, I don't really need to set an environment at all. But right now, the build that I have is using the Qt debugger. It's kind of built in. And for that, I do need to make sure that my, oh my gosh, stop it. I need to make sure that my path is set up properly. They have a kind of neat tool tip, you know, now I want it. And they tell you an example of how to set this up and how not to set it up. And you do it where first you have the string name, colon, and then the actual name, comma, the string value, the literal word value, colon, and then the actual value you want for that configuration option. You're not supposed to just say the name and then the value. You have to label the name with the word name and you have to label the value with the word value. So something like this works. So the name of the variable is path. The value of that variable is this long, not very long thing, but it just includes a few paths from the build environment. 
so that the Qt stuff can get the libraries that it needs. Next up, I'm going to have to set the debugger path. It did not automatically figure out where it is, but that is the path. You'll see if you insist on using backslashes, you're going to have to double them up so that JSON doesn't get angry. Uh, but you also have the option of just using regular forward slashes. And the rest of this I just leave alone. I'm going to go back to that CPP file that I wanted to debug. My breakpoint is still supposedly there. And I say, try it now. And I have two entries with the same name. I don't know why. Let's do the first one. Slowly but surely, the main window is coming up. And we are at a breakpoint, not the one. Uh, oh, yeah, we are at the one that I sent. Just a bit after, I guess, this got optimized out. And we got a whole debugger, a whole nice, beautiful, gooey front end to GDB. Can I hover? <laughs> True, I can. <laughs> can I hover over field sync? It says false, but I can. And we can step and see what happens. We've got our call stack. It's a whole debugger, folks. I'm going to continue on here. There are other breakpoints that I set previously that it remembered because that wasn't part of my uh, VS Code folder, but was part of my app data user data that it was remembering. But just as some more examples, I'm here in the code that implements the main emulated CPU debugger. So I am C++ debugging the emulated CPU debugger. And on the left, I can open up this and take a look at its fields, or I can take a look at some other locals. And there you go. A free multi-platform debugging experience. And that covers what I wanted to show you guys. That's Visual Studio Code acting as a code browser and as a debugger front end with what appears to me to be quite minimal configuration necessary just to get it up and running. I hope you found this interesting. And as always, thank you for watching.